Hello travelers, welcome back to the Meow Tavern. I'm Ash, your host, and today we're going to go over the shenanigans of Peach Girl, requested by this user right here. And I'm glad I actually followed through with it because halfway through the anime, I realized I've actually seen Peach Girl when I was in high school and I remember it being so frustrating, so blood boiling, and the root cause of all of my emotional stress. So before we go down memory lane, I kind of want to give you a breakdown of what to expect in this video. We're going to go over the characters, and after that, I'm going to give you somewhat of a detailed recap of episode 1. Then we're going to have a breakdown from episode 2 to 12, 13 to 22. 23 to 25 will be combined with the Peach Girl next section, and then final thoughts and overview. And while I'm going through the whole story of Peach Girl, I will be sprinkling in my analysis and my commentary as always. So let's get started with our lead protagonist, Momo Adachi. Also my cat's name, so she might be looking at me each time I say Momo, but our lead protagonist, Momo Adachi, with her sun-kissed skin and chlorine bleached hair because she was on the swim team. Things that I really liked about her and things that you see throughout the show is that she's not a quitter, right? Um, and she puts her all in her relationships and her friendships. And she doesn't really give up easily, even when she was getting bullied by Sai and eventually her entire class. That's insane. Um, she doesn't just transfer out. She sticks right through it and she tries to clear her own name. And that type of dedication, fighting back nature, is what makes Momo really fun. Because you don't see that often. She doesn't give up and I really like that energy from her. Unfortunately, she's really insecure about her skin tone. But you can't really blame her for that because colorism is a huge issue in Asia. And not to mention she surrounded herself with really shitty girls who've lied and backstabbed her. There was a girl in middle school that told her that her crush doesn't like dark-skinned girls, but that was a freaking lie. I believe that first incident of somebody telling her that her crush doesn't like her because she has dark skin really started her insecurity issues and kicked it overdrive because she starts putting on sunscreen like crazy and starts trying to hide away from the sun, just taking extreme measures to really not get tanner than she already is. But Miss Ma'am is in the swim team. Come on, embrace yourself. I think that's what makes Momo really, really relatable to a lot of girls, myself included. I find her very relatable. I find her struggles interesting. I think a lot of dark-skinned Asians, brown girls, and black girls all around the world can probably relate to her in one way or the other. She has a strong personality and is very thoughtful and nice, which I also think is her biggest flaw because she forgives Sai, who is her biggest bully throughout the show, uh, way too easily in my opinion. And even if she says that she hasn't forgiven or forgotten the things that Sai has done, she looks out for Sai way more than anyone else does for her. Well, Kaidi does, but still. Momo is just a girl's girl. She's always there for Sai, but... Sai picks up on that energy way too late. I also think her second biggest flaw is that she's way too desperate to be in a relationship. Like, girly, you do not need to be in a relationship. It is okay to be single. Just take it easy. You will find someone else later. Plenty of fish in the sea. You don't need to stick with either Toji or Kairi. Please, girly, just stay single. <laughs> I also don't know why she likes someone as dense as Toji, but... We'll get to him later. Next up is Sai, our main antagonist for most of the show. She's pretty insecure and she comes off as lacking any sort of unique personality of her own. It's like she has an identity crisis, so she clings on to Momo and starts liking whatever Momo likes. So if Momo likes a bag, Sai likes that bag and she'll even lie to Momo to her face and say, ah, I don't like that bag and then she'll go and buy it and then bring it to school the next day so she can get compliments and rub it in Momo's face. Not cool. That girl is just petty, okay? 
She also lies and spreads rumors about Momo trying to ruin her reputation, and it does work because her classmates start hating Momo to the point where some girls even start bullying Momo, right? Trying to ruin her swimsuit outfit and then leaving her dry clothes, dry regular school uniform under tap water, running tap water, right? Momo goes through a lot because of Sai, and Sai's lies never slow down and stop. There, eventually, Sai does get shunned by her classmates because all the lies come out, right? And the truth prevails. But she stays calm for like an episode before she reverts back to her normal self when she gains confidence, and not to mention once Momo forgives her and starts hanging out with her again, which girly should not have done that because you guessed it sai returns back to her normal self and tries to manipulate momo and not to mention tries to break up and successfully does break up toji and momo later into the show sai has also endangered momo's life countless times she does not care what kind of danger she puts the people that she's manipulating and she, as long as she gets what she wants but even when she gets what she wants she's not happy or fulfilled at all it's as if there's a void in her that can't be fulfilled no matter how hard she tries she'll lose interest when in whatever she had obtained and then she'll try and go after whatever momo's into now or whatever momo is interested in now not to mention she ends up in a super toxic relationship with kai another character's brother ryo ryo is sai 2.0 he is the older version of sai and they both try and manipulate each other like crazy he, she just gets treated garbage by him and i don't want to make a separate section for ryo so i'm just gonna go ahead and say this about him he sucks. He's a shitty character. Comes towards like the second half of the show and he endangers Sai's life. He puts her in a very compromising position where he tells her that he's found a filming gig for her, but we all can tell by real shady character that it's not a filming gig that he found for her. It's a OF, let's say, film if that makes sense, if you know what I mean. Like, he's trying to get her to make corn. And it, it's it's a really shady situation. She locks herself in the, in the bathroom while these creepy-ass dudes are trying to, like, make the film. It's so non-consensual. It's so awkward and gross. Of course, Momo comes to the rescue, helps her out, um, and brings her whole class. Kaidi brings the whole class. But yeah, uh, even though that had happened to Sai, she still goes back to Ryu. She still is begging Ryu to be her boyfriend. And Ryu never apologizes to her and says, I'm just trying to give you a taste of real life. Don't be so gullible. Who are you? Toji, oh my gosh, this guy is dense. He is a coconut head. I don't know why Momo likes this man at the beginning of the series, right? He he does mature towards the end, but still, at the beginning, I'm like, Toji's dumb dumb. Okay, Toji gets easily manipulated by Sai. Momo tells Toji, hey, boyfriend, Sai is not my best friend. And you know what he tells Momo? He's like, I can't believe you just said that. Sai is a great friend and you should learn to appreciate your friends better. Girly Pop, if I tell you that someone is not my friend and we don't fuck, why are you trying to make it happen? What the fuck? He's the dumbest guy in shoujo I've seen in a hot minute because who the hell thinks it's okay to practice kissing on a girl on another girl that's not your girlfriend? So that you will be prepared to finally give your girlfriend the first kiss. He's so stupid, okay? And the reason why I'm giving you a bit of the plot in these character introductions is so that you're prepared and you already understand when I gloss over certain things that these characters are, they're messy, okay? And that Toji is really, really stupid, okay? He gets, he gets toyed around with Sai a lot. Sai feeds his mind with poison and he just openly 
accepts and absorbs it all, okay? He doesn't question size intentions and is just too trusting and takes everything from uh, like at face value. And I also don't know why Momo went through the trouble of trying to prove her innocence and her love for Toji. Oh, hell no. The hospital scene? Girl, we'll get to that. Despite having two brain cells, he's a very admirable guy when he can be. He can be very devoted to Momo. Um when he does mature up i do feel like halfway through the season when he breaks up with momo to protect her from sai because sai has some compromising pictures of momo and he doesn't want them to be released to the press and ruin momo's life um i i think it was quite admirable of him to just break up with Momo for her own sake. It just goes to show that he's willing to endure the pain of not being with Momo to protect her, right? And then seeing her with some other guy. Boo hoo. Sad. Next up is Kaidi. Okay, Kaidi has got a player reputation, but he's reliable. He's a character that I really liked the first half, like a lot. Um, he comforts Momo more than Toji, um, and he isn't quick to fall for Sai's scheme, mainly because his older brother Ryu is the same thing, so he can pick up on someone's manipulation very easily, which is cool, but not really at the same time. The first half of the season, I'm completely convinced that he loves Momo wholeheartedly. He's team Momo since episode one. He always tries to help clear out her name whenever rumors are spread. And he even tries to help out Momo by staging a scene where Toji is hiding behind a tree. And he has Sai spill all the beans on all the evil shit that she's done setting up Momo. So Toji understands that Momo wasn't lying when she said that Sai... It is not it, okay? She's not a good person and that she has caused a lot of rift between Toji and her and has spread crazy rumors about Momo trying to ruin her life. He's got this ride or die vibe to him that I think everyone really ends up liking about him, right? He is just that one person that we needed to be on Momo's team, right? And I can't help but cheer for him and want Momo and him to end up together. I can keep going on about how this guy is like a guardian angel of Momo's and how much he puts in effort in trying to make sure that she is okay. He's always there for her. But his biggest flaw has to be that he can't let go of someone he fell in love with. Misao, the school nurse and his childhood tutor. That just totally ruins the Kairi character eventually, but yeah, that's his only flaw. He is incapable of prioritizing and making Momo his number one. So that's the gist of the characters in Peach Girl, and I guess we can now finally move on to the recap of episode one. So here's the plot with a little sprinkle of analysis. Peach Girl is a shoujo manga and anime from the early 2000s. The anime aired in 2005, and we follow Momo Adachi, a high school girl with chlorine bleached hair and dark complexion. She's seen as easy and I think this has a lot to do with Garu fashion. I'll link down a couple of videos on Garu fashion if you're really interested and want to learn more from interviews that I've found of current Garus and previous Garus so that you have like a very, you know, in-depth perspective from somebody who actually follows the fashion. So this is my understanding of the Garu fashion. Garu or Kogal, Kogal meaning high school Garus, started as a fashion wave defining Japanese beauty standards. Japanese beauty standards being pale skin, dark hair, and very natural makeup. On the other hand, Garu fashion was all about tanning your skin or keeping your natural tan, right? And it was all about bleaching your hair either blonde or brown, and not to mention eccentric makeup and the garu that i usually think of and am more familiar with is the extreme version which is ganguro um, where they have the white eye makeup there and then the white lips kind of makeup kind of like a chav uh, <laughs> makeup style they're not the same you know but um that's what i know like when i was a teenager that's the garu i was familiar with but garu comes in many sub 
you know um categories there's like the hime there's a gothic version there's a rock version there's um roma uh amekaji i think and agejo and agejo is the one where it's all about sex appeal and a lot of people in that particular style and fashion happen to also be people that participate in escort business and so that's where i think that the hypersexualization of garus came from um or rather garus are seen as hypersexual people because of that subcategory that's what i think i think garus are also portrayed as or are seen quite often as bullies sometimes because unlike the usual demeanor of being quiet and keeping yourself i think garus are party gals you know so they're loud they're you know blunt and quite honest and so people may perceive them as rude honestly they just sound like chill people to hang out with and girlies who will never lie to you if you look ugly in a shirt you know so i don't know gotta sound like the type of people i want to be around now because of the Y2K fashion trend and TikTok, uh, the Garu fashion is making a resurgence, so it's becoming popular again. Garu now look a little different, so they don't over tan as much, but the fashion is quite still alive. So like I said, I'll link down in-depth videos in the description if you're interested in learning about Garu fashion. Momo is friends with a girl introduced uh, as Sai, who I've already told you about, who seems sweet, but is the devil herself. Right. Momo learns very quickly that Sai likes to copy every single little thing that Momo likes. If Momo likes a bag, so does Sai. If Momo likes a particular type of shoe, so does Sai. Right? Sai will quite often copy her style as much as she can. Right? Except tanning her skin. <laughs> but because of this, when Sai asks Momo who her crush is, Momo lies and says, Kaidi the most popular guy in school, so it wouldn't seem so out of place. But in reality, she liked a guy named Toji. In middle school, she asked a girl if she could go up and ask Toji what kind of girls does she does he like. I'm sorry, but Toji, he said he doesn't really like girls with tan skin. That took a blow to her confidence, right? So even though she thinks that Toji might not ever really like her back, she still is, you know, crushing on him. The heart wants what it wants, right? Because Sai thinks that Momo actually likes Kaidi, she tries later during that first episode, rizzing him up, which obviously is unsuccessful because he tells her that he's able to see through her selfish demeanor. And when Sai tries to shit talk Momo, Kaidi's not having any of it and decides to defend Momo instead and is her hype man, you know? Sai is flabbergasted and hates that she's just been blown off by Kairi. And so to start some shit and stir up drama, she writes uh, Kairi and Momo's name on the blackboard. You know, it's kind of like a love chart. I think it's a Japanese version of the love chart. You do, you know, you, you write your crush's name, you write your name, and then you try and add up the percentage or whatever. But everybody sees that on the blackboard and rumors start spreading. And I think Sai's whole goal was to get Kaidi's fangirls, his little posse to pick on Momo, which they do. But here's the thing, Momo's not a pushover, so she doesn't get like bullied by them. She stands up for herself and fights back. And that's what makes Peach Curl so much easier and bearable to watch because if Momo did not defend herself, I don't think I would have watched it. Oh my gosh, the bullying that this girl endures is insane. But to add fuel to the fire, Kaidi himself spreads rumors about Momo kissing him last summer. This clown. <laughs> Get away from me! I already have somebody I like, okay? Uh, yeah, I know. It's that guy Toji, right? That's right. I've liked Toji ever since we were in junior high together. So fast forward, Kaidi gets a note who he thinks is from Momo, but it's actually from Sai, to meet him at the pool after school. Um, Toji and Sai are walking over to the pool, and um, before they get there, Kaidi falls into the pool. He can't swim as we know, so Momo helps him up and starts giving him CPR. And while she's giving him CPR, Sai's like, look Toji, see, Momo doesn't really like you. She's with Kaidi. She's making out with him but obviously she's not making out with him and toji he's using those two brain cells people he's like hey 
something's off something doesn't look right and so he goes and tries to help uh momo out and of course momo's frantic she's freaking out and uh yeah he helps them the ambulance comes over and things don't turn out the way sai thought that they would when that whole melodrama and scene is over toji pulls momo to the side and confronts her about the conversation he overheard and he tells her this i overheard the conversation you had with kairi yesterday you did i've liked toji ever since we were in junior high together uh, he actually heard that you know i don't hate girls who have dark tans in fact i think i like you too by the end of episode 1 Toji and Momo are in a relationship. Now, if this was a regular shoujo anime, I think all of us would have been super hyped and excited. I mean, there is some sort of excitement, but girl, if they got to their happy ending that easily in episode 1, let me tell you, this is the beginning of the end because this is where Sai ramps up her bullying as much as she can. And that was all episode 1, right? Episode 2 to 12 I am not going to sit here and give you every single little detail because it would take hours. I think it's better if you go and watch it yourself. Watch it in 1.75 speed if you can. Now that Momo and Toji are together, Sai wants Toji so bad cuz remember, Sai wants whatever Momo has and right now her obsession is with Toji and she is trying everything in her power to separate them as much as she can, right? So she devises a plan to get him. For instance, letting him practice kissing on her so he's prepared for his first kiss with Momo cuz he's never kissed a girl before. Dude, the miscommunication trope starts from here and it goes all the way to the end of the series. Frustrating. So, it's not like he readily agrees though. I will give him credit. He does actually back away from her, but eventually she does grab him and pull him in and kiss him. And when they're kissing, Momo and Kaidi are walking by and they see this go down. Obviously, it is heartbreaking for Momo. It is bad, but I don't think Toji realizes that Momo has seen them kissing. Toji at the beginning of the show is not boyfriend material. He does not respect Momo and what she has to say. Anyway, from here onward, Sai does her best to come off as a victim and tries to make it seem like Momo is super mean to her and bullies her around and Toji dumb ass to brain cells actually starts defending Sai. Toji. Look Momo, I understand you're angry because I kissed Sai. Well, she's not the only one you should be angry with. But she's a liar. Don't stand up for her. I don't know what's up with you two, but the last few days Sai's done nothing but look out for you. Yet for some reason you can't see that. It makes me think that maybe I was wrong about you. Okay, fast forward to when Toji gets sick and he winds up in the hospital. And y'all ain't ready for this, but um no one tells Momo that Toji is in the hospital because they all think that Sai and Toji are dating and that Momo is trying to come on to Toji. So everyone thinks that Momo is his homewrecker. So nobody tells her that Toji is in the hospital. And on Toji's end, he is like, "Sai is coming every day to see me. Why isn't my own girlfriend coming? What the heck?" Right? He's getting bitter about the fact that Momo isn't coming to see him. But eventually, Kaidi, you know, he's team Momo. He figures out that um Toji is in the hospital, and so him and Momo make their way to the hospital to pay Toji a visit. Toji is salty about Momo not coming and visiting him. They're arguing. There's some brain rot conversation happening between them. Crazy melodrama. And then all of a sudden, Momo climbs on the window sill of the hospital. They're up in who knows how many floors up, and she threatens to jump off because she loves Toji that much. She will jump off to prove to him how much she loves him and how she's not lying and that he needs to trust her, he needs to believe her. <sighs> Drama. Unhinged behavior. So they make up for like five minutes or so. The conversation shifts to, you know, oh, so Kyrie actually did kiss you, huh? And um they argue and she throws apples at Toji and runs away and says 
you know, stupid Sai can keep that stupid Toji, right? The next morning when she goes to class, Sai has basically told everybody that the apples that Momo threw at Toji had caused his stitches to reopen. Does this look like it would cause stitches to open? Get over yourself! Like, I'm, I'm really curious how I'm going to edit this because I... I don't want, I don't like to, if you haven't noticed, I don't like to over edit with sound effects and memes, but I'm so tempted to use the boom sound, the vine boom, and the bruh, because that's all this entire anime is. It's like a big bruh. Oh yeah, the lies surrounding Momo start to ramp up to the point where random side characters start bullying Momo. There's like this dramatic scene where everybody in her class wants her to get on her knees and apologize to Sai for bullying her, which we know isn't true, and for trying to steal Toji. Toji is not Sai's boyfriend. All this stuff, they, they get Momo on her fours, right? All on her fours. She's on her knees. She's crying. So Toji is out of the hospital at this point and he is still upset with Momo. And Kaede, our guardian angel, decides to pull Toji to the side and say, Hey dude, go hide behind that tree and just listen. I'll be right back with Sai. And when he comes back with Sai, Sai starts spilling all the tea of all the bad things she's done. It's a whole confession from her of all her evil deeds so far. And finally... Dumb Toji finally realizes, oh my gosh, Momo has always been telling the truth. I can't believe I did this to Momo. Dude, like, are you are you shitting me right now? Toji is going to, you know, defuse the fight when Kaidi tells him that the whole class is ganged up on Momo, but then Toji ties him up in a rope and throws him in the locker. And so that's what delays Toji saving Momo. But um, he makes his dramatic entrance, rope kind of like hanging all over him. And uh, yeah, he tells the class to back off Momo and back off his girl, right? He saves the day. Woohoo. The whole class is confused. But actually, at this point, the whole class realizes that, oh my gosh, Sai's been fucking lying. Momo has never bullied Sai and Sai's just been faking it the entire time. And so the truth comes out of all the times and all the things that Sai had done to sabotage Momo, you know, um, and the classmates that had bullied Momo um, by ripping her swimsuit and doing all this other shit, they actually also realized that they had never seen Momo bully Sai and that Sai was the one telling them to do these things. So everyone's coming to their senses at this point. Is everyone stupid in the school? Shout out to Kaidi for being Team Momo. We love Kaidi. Now. Things are calm. Sai calms down. She's mellowed out. She's lost her confidence. Right? She knows that she doesn't have her claws on anyone right now. So she chills out. Toji and Momo have a great summer. They spend it together. And then the new school year starts. By the time the new school year starts, Momo ends up befriending Sai again big mistake. She shouldn't have felt any sort of pity for her. And because she felt pity for her, um, Sai goes to like this modeling photo shoot thing and her confidence just starts coming back. And she starts lying to this one model that I don't remember the name of, but we're going to call him Blondie. She tells Blondie, that Momo's always bullying her, blah, blah, blah. And he doesn't know Momo, so he's just eating all that shit up. He's like, oh, she fucking sucks. She's a horrible friend. And that's like just revitalizing. Sai, she's just gone back to her normal self. And because she's not back to her normal self, she is back to being a bitch. Let's take a break and talk about Victim Complex. While watching this anime, I got really intrigued by Sai's behavior. I just wanted to know why someone would want to be a victim and does like how do they feel fulfilled by being a victim like how does that empower them like it's weird you know I don't want to be a small guy I don't want to look like I'm easy to bully and push around right so she was interesting in that sense but a basic google search 
the first thing that you're going to see like on Wikipedia or like the top search is going to say something like this um, particular definition where it's defined as a desire of being a martyr for your own sake and seeking persecution because it feeds a physical need or a desire to avoid responsibility. Now, as for peer-reviewed reliable articles, they were either behind a paywall. I'm not paying money for this, dude. I'm just, I was just trying to do a little extra, let's have a think session moment in the video. Uh, it's okay. I'm good. I, I don't want to pay for it. But I did see a lot of articles mentioning this one book, like they were all citing this one book called um, Who's Pulling Your Strings? How to Break the Cycle of Manipulation by Harriet B. Breaker. And so I went on EBSCO, like uh, I went on my local library, EBSCO, and I rented out the audiobook because that was the only version available. And I listened to it. And I think it's a really good listen. So if you want to learn about manipulation and hear case studies and examples of it and, you know, the, the author breaking it down, I think that will be a great book by Dr. Harriet. But, um, yeah. Okay. So... I wasn't able to find much information about victim complex as much as I was able to learn a lot about manipulation and the art of manipulation, right? And so what I figured out was that manipulation reinforces dependency, helplessness, and victimization, and that it limits the growth of a relationship in a healthy and balanced way. Um, the longer the manipulator continues the, to be in a relationship with somebody they're manipulating, the stronger they grow and the more rigid their methods get. And that manipulation thrives in devious and indirect communication. So hidden agendas and purposes disguised. That's what the author said. Um, most common forms of manipulation is threats, intimidation, coercion, you know most of these things that we see Sai and Ryu do so that's how I was like oh sure I don't know much about victim complex but at least I understand these two little fucks um the last thing that I kind of want to share that I thought was interesting from that book is personality traits that are likely to uh, attract manipulators um she says disease to please which means people pleaser people with abandonment issues fear of conflict Fear of conflict can result in poor communication because you're too afraid to confront the person about whatever you have an issue with, right? You have a trouble saying no. Um, you have an unclear identity of self and feel invisible or small. Or you have low self-reliance. You, you just can't depend on yourself. And if you have an external locus of control. So once Sai's confidence is back, she starts dating the Blondie model, right? And later she convinces this guy to go on a date with Momo but we both know that Momo is with Toji and she's not really into this blonde she doesn't even notice him but he thinks that she has a huge crush on him and it would be a huge favor to Sai if she went on a um, if he went on a date with her <sighs> Sai calls Momo while Momo and Toji are celebrating, uh, I think it's like Momo's, they're celebrating Momo's birthday. Sai calls and makes it seem like the blondie is, and her are having issues and she really needs Momo to come and resolve that issue. So Sai really like starts crying and making it seem like, a, you know, shit's gone down. And so Momo panics and tries to offer Sai help. Hold on, Toji. Here I come! What? Uh. Momo? <laughs> Why'd you scare me like that? Sai, but how? What the hell do you think you're doing here dressed like Momo? What is this freaking anime, dude? The drama never stops, okay? Um, the drama just never stops. Momo freaks out at the blondie dude because she's like, dude, I don't want to go on a date with you, the heck? She gets out of his car, he starts chasing her, 
there's like this really shitty scene. <laughs> Momoai. Oh. Hey, are you alright? Takes off her dirty clothes and puts a clean shirt of his on her because he didn't want her dirty clothes to dirty his bed or some shit like that. So Kaidi, Toji, Sai start looking for Momo and they eventually go to the blondie's place, you know, because Sai's like, yeah, I had her go with him. And so when they get to, to the, I almost said hotel, um, when they get to his apartment, um, Ty goes in to check in first. And what she sees is a really sad, upset Momo in bed, whereas the other model guy, he's like, he went to take a shower for some reason, but um, he's in his bathrobe and she snaps a picture of it. And it looks pretty wrong, right? Like something happened. And then she calls uh, the guys upstairs. This episode is important because that photo that Sai has just snapped is going to be a blackmail material that she uses against Toji over and over and over again. Okay, Sai threatens to release that photo um, at a press release that the blondie model is having. And so she wants toji to break up with momo on her birthday and that's what he does they go on a date and momo's really bummed out she's really upset as to why toji looks absent at their date and isn't really there he's not focusing he's not having fun he seems pissy and when they're in the fairy's wheel of course they're in the fairy's wheel oh what's in the fairy's wheel um <laughs> he breaks up he calls um sai first so sai can listen to the conversation and he breaks up with momo you know in return for all the photos being destroyed which sai obviously doesn't destroy because that's how she convinces toji to then go out with her at this point it gets really sad because momo is so desperate for toji and it's like girly pop please stop she's like camping outside his house waiting for him to come out and to get back with her it's it's really sad it's, it's really hard to watch it's it's like please just be okay with being single um Kyrie during this time steps up and tries to like really be there for her and honestly i don't think he should have done that because he was okay with being her rebound guy my guy have some self-respect what the fuck um and before you know it by episode 12 to 13, Kaede and Momo are dating now because Toji has made it very crystal clear that he wants nothing to do with Momo and that he is actually dating Sai now. Everybody in the school fucking hates um, Toji, or at least her classmates. Um, his classmates hate Toji because they're like, dude, what the fuck? You just left Momo to be with Sai? You're fucking weird. So I need a break. I'll be back. Let's start. 13 till 22. I feel as if the only good character, Kaede, was finally with who we wanted him to be with, Momo. But of course, the show must go on and that means they needed to switch it up a little bit and kind of kick in the gear, some sort of drama with him. And in this case, it had to be middle school crush, um, childhood, yeah, you know, um, Miss Hao, his tutor who recognized him as being his own person and not a shadow of his uh, brother, Ryo. So he really appreciated that Miss Hao liked him and acknowledged him as his own person. And because he felt recognized and acknowledged, he just started liking her. And that was it. That was the biggest reason why he started liking Miss Hao. And Ms. Ao doesn't know any of this information, um, of course. She's 10 years older than him. Uh, Ms. Ao has a thing for Kairi's brother, but she has never told Ryu that she likes him. So it's a constant roller coaster of emotions, guys. Like, I'm not even kidding, because 
Kaidi can't seem to prioritize Momo as his number one and Momo is so down bad. Um, this is where I've kind of started not liking Momo a little bit. I was like, girl, I, I liked you so far, but right now you are so desperate. Oh my gosh. If he can't put you as his number one and he keeps thinking of Masao and he's telling you that he's telling you that he can't put you as number one and that Misao's on his mind, you know, why are you doing this to yourself, girl? Eventually, Kaede and Momo split up for a day and they're not in a relationship um, because, you know, Kaede says he doesn't know if he can love Momo the way he loves Misao and that they should split up. So they break up for like a day or two before Momo comes up crying and saying that she's okay and that she's willing to wait for him and that she is okay and is understanding so desperate girl what in the heck she's so desperate so she's okay with being number two which we know she isn't but Kaidi and her get back together while this is happening Sai and Kaidi's brother Ryu end up in a relationship they both try manipulating each other well Sai tries but obviously she fails because Ryu is a better manipulator he's been doing it longer he's older he knows how to pull strings better it's a toxic relationship. I've already given you a gist of what he does to her. It's so toxic. I mean, the man is a menace, okay? Eventually, Momo's patience runs out of being number two and she gives uh, Kaidi this ultimatum, I guess? A chance to not fuck it up one last time. So they're starting summer vacation and she has tickets to a trip and she says to him before they part ways for the summer because he's going to go soul searching and whatever. So he had at this point confessed to Misao, I believe, that he liked her. He got turned down by her. Um, and so at this point, um, Momo knows that, but she's like, hey, you got to figure your shit out. By the end of summer, if you think you want to be with me, meet me at the station. And if you are late more than five minutes, we're done. Because I can't be waiting around for you all the time. Um, I got to put me first type of situation, you know. And I can't bear to be, you know, strung along. They used to work in a convenience store together. So he quit and he went his soul searching during summertime and he ended up working at a, a noodle restaurant and while that's happening Sai tells Toji that um, there's a job opening at a convenience store where Momo worked and so Toji applies and gets hired and Momo's a little uncomfy with him being there of course the breakup they had was really nasty she still doesn't know why he broke up with her and so Sai actually around this time has kind of calmed down and is a little bit more mature and is also playing Cupid at this point because she sets up this scene where she goes into the break room to Toji and starts really loudly talking so she makes sure that Momo can overhear them and she brings up the photo. Congratulations. I guess that means you're officially free of me now. And this is everything. Yep, I erased everything about Momo and Jiro from my cell phone and my computer. It's gone forever. I'm sorry, Toji. I understand that you hate me for ruining your life. I have to admit, I never thought I'd hear those three words come out of your mouth. Neither did I. Over the last few days, I've come to realize that if I hadn't threatened to release those photos of Momo and Jiro to the media, you never would have split up with Momo. And the only reason you started dating me was to make sure I couldn't do anything bad to her, right? To keep an eye on me? Uh, to think that you put up with my games all that time just to protect the girl you were forced to get away. You know, Sai can't ruin Momo's life anymore, and he feels free. Free of Sai, free of everybody. Because Sai obviously ditches and dumps Toji because she finds him really boring and goes after Ryu, which is like, girly pop, why did you go through hell to take Toji from Momo? Skip to the end of summer, right? Um, Momo's at the station waiting for Kaidi. Kaidi actually did come really early to the station, but he bumps into Momo, I mean, sorry, Misao, and there's a mellow drama scene with the brother. The brother tries to protect Misao from these thugs and ends up getting hurt and so he's taken to the hospital missile and kaidi uh get into a cab and go to the hospital but the thing is momo had just arrived at the station and saw missile and kaidi get into the taxi together 
So she was like, what the heck is he doing with Miss Sousa? Is he saying he's picking her? She decides to be patient and wait at the station. And Mr. Sir here has totally forgotten that he has a time limit. And that she said five minutes and that's it. She, she's gone. And he is over 30 minutes late. Kaidi makes his way to the station, but Momo isn't there. Momo, because Kaidi's not there in five minutes, starts crying. She's really sad. And Toji shows up and he's like, hey, why are you sad? What's going on? What's up? And well, I'm exhausted, but she... <laughs> She ends up going to the trip with Toji, okay? She goes to the trip with Toji. And when they go to the place, a typhoon hits. And so Kaidi, in order to... Because he's like, I'm so in love with Momo. I have to let her know. Um, he makes his way to wherever, whatever trip they, they were going to do. And he travels during the typhoon to get to her. Wow, so romantic, but too bad, so sad, because she, she sleeps with Toji, it seems like, in episode 20, 21, one of those. Momo feels very neglected, she feels very confused, there's a lot of things that happened, and she feels as if Toji is always there for her, and especially after knowing that Sai was holding those pictures, and he was willing to break up to keep her safe and not let her life, 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 life not let her life get ruined, just seemed more reliable and did put her as number one in her mind. And I think that's why she went on a trip with him. And honestly, it's kind of awkward, but they're back together. Yeah, after that trip, they're back together. And when the typhoon's over and whatnot, they're at the train station. Um, Kaidi finally reaches Momo and, but he sees Toji's there and he's like, oh fuck, she moved on. She did tell me five minutes. So when they go back to school, he kind of pretends that nothing's wrong and that everything's fine. But we all know that something's wrong. He just wants what's best for her. And it sucks. You do feel bad for Kaidi. You kind of feel bad for Momo. I, at this point, was like, yo. Just be single. <laughs> so ep episode 22, uh, I think this is the episode that Sai thinks that she's pregnant. And there's this um, interaction Ryu and her have with a group of thugs. I think they're thugs. I, f I forgot. It was a group of people that they have a squabble fight over something. And they end up in the hospital. Ryu is the only one that got beat up. And um, Sai... Well, she feels as if she's lost her baby. But then the doctor pulls Ryu to the side and tells him, like, hey, Sai's not actually pregnant. Sai is experiencing what we would call a phantom pregnancy where the person has convinced themselves that they're pregnant to the point where they start having biological symptoms. So, episodes... 22 to 25 and beach girl next it gets to a point from 23 to 25 23 is the first instance of this and that is she has to pick between toji and kaidi once and for all right uh, it can't be bouncing back between the two of them and toji's like yeah you gotta make your pick because I'm out. I'm, I'm happy whoever you pick, just pick. I can't do this anymore. And so she ends up picking Toji because she feels like Kaidi has always made her number two. Keep in mind, no one has at this point cleared up miscommunication between Kaidi and her. Till Sai tells Momo, even though Momo has made her decision, and I'm going to be honest, I personally think... Toji was the more logical decision because of Peach Girl Next, but um, but then again, she should have just stayed single and found someone else. Um, so Sai tells Momo, hey, by the way, I don't know if you know this, even though Kaidi was late, he, you know, traveled in a rainy, horrible typhoon weather to try and get to you to the trip. 
you know, uh, to, to, to let you know that he loves you and that you're the only one for him, right? So she clears up like he did actually try and come over and travel for you, right? Momo is for some reason swayed by this. And then the other person that clears up a communication is Misao, who sits down with uh, Momo and tells her that, hey, by the way, he was late at the station because his brother went to the hospital. And so we went with him and um, that's why he was late. And so now Momo is conflicted. I think Momo and Toji are, they're, they're like celebrating something. They're, they're together on a trip or something. And Momo decides to ditch Toji and Toji's like, Hey, if you ditch me right now, we're done. We're through. You're picking Kaidi. That means she goes to find Kaidi because Kaidi is gone, I guess. And he's, he's, um, it's, it's like a really bad weather it's raining like crazy he's at the beach and she's worried that he might take his own life or something you know and so she goes searching for him and by episode 25 momo and kaidi end up together right and the anime ends with this particular scene we met on the beach and the ocean has bound us together so many emotions have dissolved in the sea I've made up my mind. I can honestly say I'm happy now. Before we go into Beach Girl next, I personally want to say that she was too emotional. She never gave herself time to breathe. She kind of, I mean, I, I get it. The author wrote her that way because it's supposed to be, you know, she's a teenager. She's reckless. She's, you know, never getting a moment to chill out. It's for the drama. It's for entertainment. I'm well aware of that, but it's just hard to read that and be like, girl shouldn't you have just taken a step back right i feel like that's very common though when you're writing a drama when you're writing spicy entertaining juicy drama type of um web comic anime tv shows right they all do the same thing they add that non-stop you know drama going on because that's how you entertain your audience right I'm, I'm well aware of that but it doesn't hurt to make the the main character take a chill pill once in a while it doesn't hurt to show that hey maybe you should just put yourself in a timeout because momo really needed a timeout because wow she would just you know learn the smallest little detail like why kairi was late or or how he traveled in the typhoon and then she would throw all her insecurities and then just go run in and it's like no no when you take a moment to really think about things maybe neither of these dudes are good for you you know um so peach girl next what's up with peach girl next it's um 10 years later and it feels like the manga regressed because these are grown-ups but their drama is very much high school uh honestly and the miscommunication trope comes back right uh to chalk the series up it's a rehash of the original and Sai is back to her teenage shenanigans as a 27-year-old woman. Um, there's a little side story that I didn't mention, but it's called uh, Peach Girl's Sai Story or something like that. And Sai's side story. And in that, she is held back a year um, in high school because she was skipping out classes a lot. So she didn't get to graduate when everyone else did. And um, it's just a whole journey of her maturing and realizing that the only people and the only friends that she had were momo and that she never had anyone else on her side so she matures a lot but all of that is undone in peach girl next she's just back to being a high schooler toji is a widow with a daughter and in peach girl next he is like frantically trying to win the custody of his daughter so we get to see that i also felt like toji was the only mature one he seemed to talk and behave more like an adult right momo is a scatterbrain and is as emotional as she was kaidi the main issue with peach girl next kaidi 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 my favorite character in peach girl next for being team momo since day one but honestly this series ruins him he's back to his old shenanigans and by that, I mean, he's back to prioritizing Misao. So Misao's back. And um, 
Misao's parents are, 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 are sick. And even though Momo and Kairi are planning their wedding, he chooses to help Misao by trying to like move in with her and then look after her parents. How would you feel if you, you were engaged and your fiance was like, I'm going to help this, this woman who I used to be madly in love with. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prioritize her and her parents. And I'm going to take care of her parents. Bro, what? So Momo calls off the wedding. There's a whole a whole drama. And dude, it's, it's bad. Getting they, they do end up getting married by the end of Peach Girl Next. But the thing is, if you've written him as a 27-year-old doing that, going back to Miss Ao and not prioritizing Momo and cheese number two, sure, he might not do that with Miss Ao anymore. What if he finds someone else to prioritize? Just because just they're married doesn't mean that Kairi won't be the way he is so all of and this is why it's so shitty and why i combined it with episodes 23 to 25 because episodes 23 to 25 you get to kind of see and even before that episode uh, 20 and 21 you get to definitely see momo's mental state how insecure she feels about constantly having to worry about whether you know Kaidi is going to love her back or not and she's anxious does he love her back she doesn't feel comfortable in their relationship and it's just sad to see that she felt as if someone else in this case Toji made her feel comfortable and you know was reliable and he, she never felt insecure with him and how she did make a good decision and then it kind of came undone when she got a little too emotional about all the other you know details of misinformation that came out if Peach Girl Next never happened, I think her decision was fine. Like, that's who we were rooting for, Kaede and Momo, to end up together. Or, well, I was at the beginning of the series, but halfway through, I, I, I wasn't so sure how I felt about it. I just, well, I've told you, I think she should have been single. <laughs> Fucking Kaede is back to making her feel like she's invisible and she feels neglected because he spends more time with Misao and taking care of Misao. Yeah, also, actually, off topic, but I just discovered that Vampire Night actually has a second manga, uh, Vampire Night Memories, and it's still ongoing. I had no idea. I just kind of wanted to throw that in. I think the author probably got offered a lot of money to keep the series going, so hey, if I was her, me too. <laughs> but I, I think she should have just dropped some of the old characters and brought some new ones or something. I found myself not entirely hating the anime. I found it entertaining, um, mainly because the characters weren't that easy to hate. Well, Sai was easy to hate, but she was like a very plain, one-dimensional character. She's like the bully. She kind of has her moments where she matures, but you know, not really. But I will say, I don't think I can rewatch it anytime soon. And I, I mainly can't because, well, I probably will have to while editing this video to gather some footage, but... Uh, I do think that the manga is really pretty and Peach Girl Next a manga, the line art is so clean. It's a, it's a really clean looking manga if I'm being honest. What can be our big takeaway from Peach Girl? I think our big takeaway from Peach Girl can be one, love yourself, okay? Love yourself. Two, if you are stuck in a love triangle and you don't know who to pick because girl, I can't relate, imagine being popular, but um, stay single just walk away okay and the third thing i think we can learn from beach girl is don't bully don't be like sai don't manipulate people and if you're a person that's really you know uh, a people pleaser and you can't say no or you're really nice please learn to be a little mean learn to fight back learn to be kind of bitter because this world is really cruel and we get to see characters like Ryu and Sai show how they can easily manipulate those around them who are gullible and easily listen to people without being very skeptical right so I think this this anime really does highlight how if you are a very trusting person you will get manipulated so have your guard up don't trust everyone I know that's a very paranoid way of living but I already live like that so Thanks for watching. My next video is going to be on Vampire Night. Well, it's going to be on Book Talk first. I want to talk about stuff that I've seen on my Pinterest, not on my book, my For You page. I, I always get these on Pinterest for some reason when I'm looking for art references. But um, 
once in a while I'll get it on TikTok, but I want to talk about some really funny POVs that I found. And then, you know, that's obviously my filler video while I prepare for Vampire Night. I'm going to be putting myself on blast because I own like seven volumes. I know, that's embarrassing. Um, <laughs> I'm like exhausted. Peach Curl made me exhausted. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time. Meow Tavern now. Bye bye. Thank you.